Hello there again. Somebody asked me if I could show you how I made these creases or folds so they all match up accordingly. And of course I will do that for you. The first thing I do is actually just punch a circle out or something. I found it a little bit easier having a scalloped edge to it. And what I do next, I think I'll just zoom it a little bit closer. I just fold it in half and make sure that those, all those scallops match. And then I fold three of these. I mean, there's nine loops here. So I'm folding three of them and I'm just keeping, I'm, I'm making them cross over. So now I'm left with six loops. And then I turn the other one the other way around. So now I've got a, a folded circle like this. And now it's all up to me to just snip away six of these at once. So I'm going to do a cut from here up to there in order to get that template for that triangle. And there's also yet another six there. And I'm just going to snip it over there like so. And as you can see, I'm almost done with my triangle. This way you actually get a perfect triangle for every every time. So let's see, I want to use this one for that for this this cut here. And then I just place it over another set of triangles. And I like to do the markings with a pencil actually. Just to make sure that I make them perfect. And I'm going to do yet another one because I do want to make these fit when I start gluing them down. So, sorry, let's go like so. So, and I'm, I'm sure it's important to have those lines perfect, but as, as you can see, I'm rushing it a little bit. And then I just put it to my scoring board and I'm trying to find a line that I can score with. And I'm just using any kind of tool really. I hope my head won't bump, in, won't bump into this video now. And then I'm just trying to find a line that I can use. I think I'll go for that six inch line there. And then I'm just going to score it. And this way actually I have the chance of correcting the errors I might have done drawing the lines. Or cutting the triangle a little bit carelessly. Just find the six inch line there and score. And here's the final one. Like so. And now it's up to me to just fold these backwards. Or, yeah, just fold them the opposite way around. And now you've got this triangle shape, which, is, which you're going to match to this one, I suppose. Let's see how it would look here. Yeah, I think it just look like that. Just fold them like so. And then you're ready to glue these down. Actually, I think I'll go the other way around. I think it's more fun. And now you can see that they will match perfectly. Just line these up. And I actually found it a little bit more fun and beautiful actually also to have a scalloped edge or something with some holes in it. It makes it a little bit, little bit more complete and well worked. I hope you can see this. So I hope this is going to help you. Of course there are dyes that actually make this process for you as well. I've learned that uh, during this week. And they will both punch out the shape for you and they will also help you with the scoring. But now that you know how you're going to do it, you're actually free to make your own size. So you could go off all for these small ones to the bigger ones. And the bigger the die, the better, I suppose. And if you go for the really big dies from Spellbind as well, you can. there's no limit to how big they can be, actually. It's only the machine that you've got that when it limits you. So I hope you're inspired to make your own uh, ball ornaments for Christmas or whatever festive occasion you might, might have in head. So this is my tip for you. I hope this helps and please let me know if you make your own ball ornaments. I'd love to see them.
I'm signing off right now. Bye-bye.